Hi guys, how's it going? And welcome back to our garden. Um, so today I just thought I would sort of take you around the garden and just show you some beautiful perennials that I'm loving in our garden at the minute. Um, so it's kind of mid-August and this is kind of the month of abundance, I guess, in the garden. So a time where maybe some plants are lulling a little bit, they've been cut back, but it's also a time where those really sort of um, workhorse perennials are really in their stride at the moment. And a lot of these perennials will just keep going all the way through summer, all the way into autumn. And some of them also providing a really good sort of autumn winter interest as well. So come along with me and I'll just show you some lovely perennials that I'm loving in the garden at the moment. So my daughter Elise is going to join us for this video. <laughs> it's quite bright, isn't it? <laughs> So I just thought we would start with this beautiful echinacea um, and Elise just pointed out that it's loaded with bumblebees so I don't know if you can see that bumblebee there absolutely yeah the bumblebees pollinators love this plant so also known as a cone flower so the reason for that is it's got these sort of cones in the center of the plant and they're sort of quite prickly you can sort of, they're quite hard and prickly and they sort of get harder throughout the season. But this one's got a beautiful sort of vibrant orangey centre and then gorgeous um, pinky leaves. You can get all different types of colours and shapes for echinacea. This one is absolutely massive. So Elise, just stand next to it and then you can see. <laughs> so Elise is nine and a half years old. Um, quite tall for her age but yeah it's just absolutely massive this one it's huge another great thing that I love about the echinacea is when it's first coming out it sort of has these sort of lighter actually let me show you even the original one let me come out the sun a bit there we go so that's when it's first coming out so it comes out on this particular one with sort of green leaves it then goes to a little bit more sort of greeny pinky and then this one there. That's it. And then goes to that gorgeous sort of pinky. But as I said, you can get loads of different colours with these echinaceas. So yeah, these start flowering sort of mid-July into August and all the way through into autumn. And even sort of once they've dropped their petals, they leave these the cones in the middle and they are absolutely beautiful winter interests so you can leave them all throughout the winter and it just adds that interest throughout the winter and also provides a bit of forage for um, wildlife as well but yeah so that's our first um, August perennial that I wanted to talk about on to the next one so the next one I thought we would cover is this beautiful lamb's ear so again this is a perennial um, and it can sort of last throughout uh, winter actually for us here in the UK um, but the reason I love it so much is A the foliage colour look at the coat yeah it's absolutely beautiful foliage colour sort of sagey silvery colour but then when you have a look at the leaves can you see the fur? they're all furry yeah so they're really nice and soft they are so they basically feel like a lamb's ear so that's why they're called lamb's ear but they're just so, so soft. And you rub it on your face and it's so nice. <laughs> but yeah, there you go. <laughs> Yay, so soft. Yeah. Um, so yeah, these ones are basically evergreen, but um, more sort of June time, they'll shoot out the spike um, blooms with sort of purpley flowers. Bees and pollinators absolutely love them as well. They've been chopped down, but we're left with this gorgeous, gorgeous foliage which I just absolutely love and it provides beautiful leaves yeah and it provides such a nice contrast to other leaf colours so more sort of greeny leaf colours yeah so that is our second perennial on to the next one so I just thought I would share with you we've got a little I think it's like a little adolescent pigeon that just came to our garden and it's struggling to fly I think a little bit but anyway it's sort of taking shelter in this little spot underneath the eucalyptus tree we've given it a little bit of corn and some water so hopefully it'll revive itself and then hopefully fly off to join its little chums 
He's like, what are you doing? Hello, little one. He's like, why are you looking at me with that strange thing? <laughs> anyway, on to the next perennial. So, the next perennial that I wanted to talk about was this gorgeous Lobelius. I think you can already see it. <laughs> this beautiful beautiful plant here so as you can see it's in full swing at the moment in August and yeah the leaves itself are just beautiful they're sort of two-tone greeny little deep burgundy you've got the stems that are sort of dark burgundy as well again just adding that extra bit of interest and then these gorgeous gorgeous blooms really really beautiful so pinky light magenta-y if you have a look in, this is how they sort of first come out. So they come out as these little round buds and then sort of age to a more open flower. Really, really gorgeous. And we've got it here backed by the black lace elderberry in the background, which I think makes a really, really good contrast to the flowers, but also brings out the sort of colour of the stems in the lobelia. So yeah, beautiful, beautiful plant. So the next part plant that I wanted to talk about are the gorgeous hydrangeas. So we're just going to zoom. I've got two different types in our garden. We have got, I hope you can see with the sun, <laughs> we've got this beautiful macrophylla hydrangea with some lovely white blooms. So you can see quite sort of broad leaves, dark leaves, quite thick leaves actually, yeah absolutely beautiful so when they first come out they come out sort of a bit more lime greeny and then they age to that um, that sort of white color but really really beautiful so again August is the time for hydrangeas so these hydrangeas uh, are macrophylla hydrangeas um, you don't really need to prune these so these bloom on old wood um, so it's best not to prune them so all I do once the um, bloom stocks have finished they've sort of gone a bit brown I just follow it down to the next sort of leaf bud and then prune it just above or you can prune it down if there's one really long stem that you don't like just prune it down to sort of the shape of the overall plant so moving on the other side I've got another hydrangea which is just starting to come out so I think I've probably got this one slightly in the wrong spot um, it needs more sun really so the macrophylla hydrangeas they don't mind a bit more shade but these ones are the panicle hydrangeas and they do like a little bit more sun so this is a little lime but as you can see it is trying to sort of push these blooms yeah looking special. really really pretty so again these ones come out sort of lime green and then they age to a bit more sort of a bit more whitey sort of limey whitey so yeah this one's just starting to flower but as I said, I think I might need to move this one because it's not getting enough sunlight. Maybe to the other side of the border. I think it'll be much happier here. But yeah, again, with these, you can actually... Um, so these, you can leave um, the so the later blooms. Um, you can leave on the actual stems throughout the winter as well. And they provide a really, really good winter, autumn winter interest. Um, you can also um, pick them and dry them as well. So they make really, really good dried flowers. So yeah, those are the two hydrangeas that I've got in the garden that I'm loving at the moment in our August weather. So we've come into the front garden now and there are three perennials that I wanted to talk about in our front garden. So the first one is ladies mantle. Look at this gorgeous plant. So I am just in love with this plant. It is such a workhorse so it's also it's had its first flush already of flowers they've been chopped back and they're just starting to push new growth as well so you've got these sort of light green um, leaves and when it rains as well because the leaves are sort of a little bit sort of domed, domed yeah thank you Elise <laughs> uh, they're sort of domed the water sort of collects in the little leaves and they look so so pretty so sort of a little bit hairy soft, and it? soft yeah and then you've got these beautiful chartreuse flowers. Now this colour is just my favourite colour ever. I love chartreuse. And it just adds that pop in a flower bed. So it just adds a bit of lightness, a bit of brightness. 
beautiful beautiful so yeah this is on its second flush of flowers and they'll keep going all the way through so that's the beautiful ladies mantle and then moving along not far to go again beautiful echinacea and then we've got our russian sage which is the next next perennial i wanted to talk about so again this one is in its prime sort of end of july into Ju uh, into august and as you can see the pollinators absolutely love this plant it's full of it so i'll just try and zoom in so you can see the actual flowers so they come out with these sort of little fluffy little buds or calyx i think they're called and then out of it comes the sort of purple flower so really beautiful look his little bumblebee hey bumble there's pollen nectar and the pollen yeah that's it so really really beautiful so again for me it's not just the flowers but it's actually the foliage as well so the foliage is this sort of sagey green and again it just adds another sort of depth of color into a flower bed so against your sort of dark green you've got the sage we've also got our lovely heuchera again just provides that different color of foliage there so the next one I thought we'd talk about, another purple flower, is this verbena here. So I think you can see the height of it. <laughs> it is absolutely massive. So again, you can just see next to Elise how big this perennial gets. And that's all, literally nearly from the ground, it grows all that height in one season. <laughs> so again, these have been in bloom quite a while now. Um, but sort of August is their sort of prime and I'll just zoom in to these beautiful flowers absolutely gorgeous so little clusters of little flowers yeah and this one's a really really great one for pollinators as well they love 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 this plant um, so the, the stems are quite sort of hard and the sort of um, hollow sort of hard and hollow um, so I think obviously it helps it to stand up properly. <laughs> Sometimes they do need a, little bit, need a little bit of a support. So in our back garden, I've had to support them a little bit because they sort of flop over. Um, but this one has done quite well actually standing up. There's another one over there. But I just think they just add a bit of sort of whimsical into a flower bed. They just add a bit of structure. They add that height um, and that colour. Yeah, absolutely gorgeous. So the next one I wanted to talk about was this beautiful Buddleia. So this is quite a new plant, planted earlier on this year. So it's still a little baby, but you can just see those beautiful blooms that Elise is holding. So this one has got sort of pinky magenta -y blooms, absolutely gorgeous. So the individual blooms are obviously the colour, but then if you look inside the throat, of the flower I don't know if you can see it they're sort of orangey orange. really really pretty and these get absolutely huge the sort of uh, panicles I guess they're called <laughs> the panicles of the Buddleia and they smell absolutely gorgeous you smell the millies they smell beautiful don't they yeah. yeah so again this is a really workhorse they sort of are in their prime now in August and uh, they'll sort of carry on going through as long as you sort of deadhead them as they sort of the flowers go over they'll just keep going and keep going um, so a lot of buddleias get really really big this one apparently gets four meters by four meters um, which I don't know I think if you prune them back really really well each year so you can prune them down to about 30 centimeters from the ground and then they will sort of start to flush out um, so you do that sort of late winter, early spring, when you start to see the buds appear, uh, prune them all the way down and you can sort of size control them that way, which is really good for buddleias. If you don't, if you just leave buddleias, they end up growing really, really large and then just have the blooms on the top half of the plant. So I want to keep it a little bit more um, compact. So I'm going to be pruning it down every year, all the way back down to 30 centimetres and then it will sort of flush out and fit nicely in this little flower bed. Yeah, look, little bloom. Yeah. <laughs> they are, yeah. Yeah. And another one I nearly forgot, but this one I wanted to talk about as well, which is the penstemon. Again, this is quite a new plant for this flower bed. 
This one's called Huskers Red, this one. Um, so you can see the leaves and the stems are sort of a dark colour. Again, adding that little different bit of foliage colour. And then the blooms. Beautiful, beautiful. Sort of lilac -y, very light lilac blooms. And again, pollinators absolutely love this plant. So they do grow up quite long, quite high, but they're quite sturdy actually. Um, so sometimes other plants like delphiniums, I did have a delphinium in that place and throughout the bed and they just ended up flopping. Um, but these don't seem to, these are sort of really strong and hold their shape, which is really, really good. So yeah, that is the Penstemon. All right, guys, well, that's it for this video. Thanks for coming around the garden with me and looking at these beautiful perennials that are in sort of full swing at the minute and a great sort of perennial to have in your garden, especially for blooming at this time of year, all the way through summer into the autumn and some of them adding that lovely winter interest as well. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.